Hello friends and welcome back to another video. Today I want to feel jazzy, so chucked a wig on. Bit of brightness, bit of, I don't know, something. Fancied a little bit of colour, a little bit of change. I haven't worn this wig in years, so, oh my gosh, I felt like my head got bigger. But I realised, nope, it's not necessarily my head, it's my hair. <laughs> so that was a bit of a struggle. Anyway, um, today I'm here to talk about all the TV shows that I watched during July, August and September. So of course, we're going to get started with July. So the first thing I watched was Loki, which ended up giving three stars. So I was shocked that Tom Hiddleston was actually um, an executive producer. It's I found that to be so amazing when you're wanted to partake in such a, I don't know, such a fan-loved thing um in as many different ways as possible um yeah that must have been so cool to work on anyway my interest was definitely piqued by episode one um but i just needed more i feel like that's one thing i hate about shows where you have to wait weekly and that's probably just a complete instant thing now everything's so instant at your fingertips netflix that sort of thing they just usually release everything all at once so i guess we've forgotten the art of waiting but yeah I mean I wanted more then and there. Episode 3 went from Doctor Who to Snowpiercer in like a minute. <laughs> I've got to say I couldn't help but compare it with other Marvel shows that have been you know quite popular and released this year but I definitely preferred WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier. This just didn't completely interest me, which I'm really shocked at because generally I love Loki's story arc um, and I'm really into just the Norse mythology side of things. But I think it might have been because it was, I don't know, maybe too confusing for me to follow, at least completely. Um, and I felt a little cheated by the end. Just when it was getting super promising and I thought we was gonna have this like massive epic reveal, it left on that horrendous cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, I'm not entirely sure on this one, sadly. It was enjoyable for me on a base level and I will definitely be watching season two. But I've got to say, it didn't really hit on the level that I was expecting it to. Next up, I watched um, What We Do In The Shadows season two, which I gave four stars. I think I've definitely spoken about season one um, and the movie. Uh, that it's inspired by it at length on this channel before um, but I was really saving this one for when I just needed that dry awkward humour because that is exactly what it delivers once again it's a mockumentary comedy 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 about a group of vampires living together um, in the 21st century I actually took like a really massive break in between watching it and there's not many episodes and they're not awfully long so I, I don't know why that happened but I think I just got into like some sort of TV slump at this point and I did this with a lot of shows and I'm still kind of doing that with a lot of different shows too but when I got back to it I did end up just watching it in quick succession this show is hilarious um the top the comedy it just gets me on another level and I really think they should introduce um Noel Fielded as a character because it just it makes sense like this is his sort of vibe I feel <laughs> After that, I checked out The Mist season one um, that I saw on Netflix, and I gave this one a 2.5 stars. So this is based on one of Stephen King's novellas, and it's starring Alyssa Sutherland, who I adore in Vikings, and Francis Conroy, Conroy, who I love in American Horror Story. Basically, in this, um, the, the plot of this is that the residents of a village in Maine discover some horrifying creatures whilst being trapped by a mysterious fog. And it kind of gave me bird box vibes, which is I think probably why I was interested in checking it out. But literally episode one, a few minutes in and I was already like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I hate horrible animal scenes. And if you do too, maybe skip that section. Um, yeah, it was brutal. I got more invested from about episode seven I would say and there is only ten episodes so I mean ultimately I was disappointed by this. I really thought it would be a great TV horror show focusing mainly on the trauma and the terror of this like mysterious mist. See what I did there? Mysterious mist? You know what I mean. Um, but the acting I found was quite terrible. There was a lot of body gore as well so if that's not for you definitely skip this one um the plot and all the subsequent kind of side plots that gathered together weren't all that exciting either unfortunately the thing that was most 
interesting to me was the mist itself and the science behind it but it didn't really deliver much of that at all um and yeah i just didn't really get what i was hoping to get from this series i only really like the action scenes and some of the gory bits aside from that animal scene that i mentioned at the start but i've got to say the very last few episodes did intrigue me whether that's enough for me to check out a season two if there is one i don't know i haven't really checked that's another story all right so in august i kicked that off by watching quiz which i gave four stars so quiz is a three-part mini series that was aired on itv this year a couple of months ago it must it might have been in july or august actually that it first released um and it's basically about the creation of the tv show who wants to be a millionaire i grew up watching that quiz um when i was at my grandparents so i was very intrigued to see how it actually came to be um and if the delivery itself would be entertaining because you know quiz shows and game shows are entertaining but a show about that might not be but yeah this really delivered for me surprisingly i felt unbeknownst to me it was a drum a dramatized i don't know if that's the word um it dramatized the conspiracy around an army major contestant who won uh, one million after a lot of suspicious activity and coincidence surrounding him and some people but yeah i wasn't expecting that storyline i didn't really know that was a thing um i was absolutely hooked and i watched all three in one evening which i mean i know it's not saying a lot there are only three episodes but quite clearly i enjoyed it you know i actually didn't know this had really happened but then again i was about five when all of this was really taking place in real time so yeah i was really invested in the storytelling of it i did struggle with the very middle class posh accent and just the sort of well-to-do vibe of it <laughs> it drove me crazy and actually did kind of halt my feeling of the flow of the actual show but despite that that aside i did enjoy this one so the next TV show I checked out was Bonding season one and I gave this one a three stars. So a New York City graduate student moonlighting as a dominatrix enlists her best friend from high school to be her assistant. I've been wanting to check this out um, and then my friend kind of forced me to stick it on which it sounds kind of weird when I put it that way but I was expecting I don't know more of a documentary type of vibe and I was completely wrong in that assumption. Um, the friend in this in this show like the best friend of the dominatrix wants to be a stand-up comedian which um and we get to explore that within the kink scene which was pretty funny i have to admit but i really didn't like what tiff was saying about pete they're the two friends um and how easy his life is being gay and i just didn't think she was being fair at all she is a absolutely horrible friend i would say and she had this angsty i'm not like the other girls kind of vibe which i hate as a trope i just hate full stop um but then i also loved how they were expressing their sexuality and feeling comfortable being themselves and kind of learning this new avenue of sexuality for them um yeah it was really funny pretty entertaining um and despite not really liking tiff at all I enjoyed it so yeah I'm, I would get to season two at some point I think after that I watched the tenth kingdom which I gave a five stars I feel like I want to do a full video of this one so I've recently purchased the book so I might do a book versus movie and see how that comes about um, but yeah for now I will leave that at I gave it five stars so I very much enjoyed it <laughs> so in September I checked out you season one which I gave it five stars so okay I finally checked this out because I was putting it off for ages and ages and ages I think I just kept saying to myself oh I want to pick up the book first and I do that a lot um, and it just never happened so you know chucked it on Netflix thought now is a better time than any I guess or is as good as any time as good of a time as any why can't i talk you know the saying i'm trying to say anyway i was especially curious to see how there would be more than just one season because i couldn't really figure out how it would possibly end um i mean i thought i had an idea of how it would but then that kind of made me think maybe that's not how it could go then if there's more than one season anyway we are following joe and beck joe sees beck one day in his bookshop and starts this kind of like obsessive infatuation with her stalking her placing himself deliberately in her life that it, so that she notices him and going even so far as to removing people that um gets in the way of that joe is scary because fundamentally he is incredibly charming um he's conventionally good looking as well and yet when you get to the meat of it he is 
totally unhinged especially when you see how nice he treats his kid and neighbor in contrast to how he his brain typically works and this obsessive quality that he has for Beck. It's just such a conflicting feeling, but I feel like it's acted so very well. I feel like all the shitty people in this show were the ones that could see through Joe's lies. I guess like finds like, doesn't it, as they say. But yeah, I couldn't stand Beck. I just thought she was insufferable. But generally, this was a really gripping show. Each time I put it on, I ended up watching more episodes than I intended to. Um, the ending itself went from 0 to 100 really quick. But again, I enjoyed it all. It's really messed up when you think about it, how manipulative people can be. Um, and how they sow the seeds of doubt in others. Make them then second guess themselves so that they can get into their heads more. But then, you know, realise that they were right about that person's motives all along. Won't find out until it's too late. So that, the, the psyche of it was just really fascinating to watch. Yeah, this looked at that character study really well and I loved it. I also want to say a shout out to Love is Blind after the altar. It was so good. I loved the Love is Blind TV show and then this was like a year later or something like that and I just loved, oh no sorry, two years I guess technically, I just loved seeing where everyone had got to at that point in time, if people were still together, what happened. Um, yeah, it was funny and it was cringy and I felt very empathetic towards it. It was great. So. Those are all the TV shows that I want to talk about today that I have been watching over the last couple of months. Let me know what you have been watching yourself and I shall speak to you in another video soon. Bye.